Pranam Acharji, uh, my name is Ashank. I'm an alumnus of this uh, college and currently studying in IIT Delhi. Uh, sir, today is uh, Subhash Chandra Bose uh, Jenti, and uh, as we know that uh, like uh, at the young age of 15 only he read uh, the bio biography of Vivek Swami Vivekananda and subsequently he read the teachings of uh, Ram Krishna Paramahansa and the Upanishads also. And uh, uh, this is like uh, not known uh, mostly uh, about this part of his life is not known uh, apart from being a revolutionary. And uh, uh, like, uh, and we also know that uh, Bhagavad Gita was uh, like the, the teachings of Bhagavad Gita was uh, really inspirational for him and has a special impact on his life. So, sir, my question is like, how the youth of today can be brought closer to the scriptures so that we can have more revolutionary uh, like him, who with uh, with having deeper understanding of life. See, there is no revolution possible without the Gita. Hmm. We have lot of uh, self-declared, self-appointed hmm, micro-rebels these days. Everybody wants to be seen as a uh, firebrand brand, uh, rebel in his own right. Hmm. But there is no revolution possible without the Gita. And when I say Gita, I do not mean a particular book, a particular scripture. By Gita, I mean a particular class of wisdom literature. So to me, the Upanishads are Gita. And anyway, even if you just say Gita, there are at least two dozen Gitas that just I would have spoken on. And most of them are truly remarkable. So when I say Gita, that would also mean, let's say, the the words of Ramana Maharshi hmm? or the discourses of uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti. There is no revolution possible without the Gita. Right? Now you know what I mean by the Gita? Yes. Something that uplifts your consciousness, that is Chetana, from its prakritic slavery to liberation. Our, please pay attention, this is very important. I am glad this question came up. Your default condition at birth and in life is one of slavery. We do not realize that. In fact, took the West very long to realize that. Otherwise, the West kept saying man is born free but is found in chains everywhere. Who was that who said this? No, not Dickens. Yes. So, <clears throat> no, we are not born free. Birth itself is slavery. Birth itself is bondage. Have you seen a stillborn baby? Does it have any knowledge, any realization? Is it independent of its body? Is it free of, of, of fear, of temptation? Can it control its impulses? So when you are born, you are already a slave. In the moment of conception itself in the mother's womb, it is slavery that is conceived. So liberation has to be attained and because that slavery is so fundamental to this body, therefore a great revolution is needed and that revolution can come only from the Gita. By implication, if there is no Gita in your education, you are condemning yourself to lifelong slavery. How exciting! How exciting! And that's the reason why even those who are not remembered particularly for their spiritual inclination, hmm? people like Subhash Chandra Bose, even they founded their core on Gita. 
when you think of the armed revolutionaries rajguru sukhdev even bhagat singh you do not think of them as particularly spiritual people do you you think of them as as young dashing huh fire brands with guns in their hand what is not shown to you is that they also had the geeta in their hand and some part of that propaganda has been deliberate for example we are told that bhagat singh was a die hard atheist right and the title of one of his books is often quoted but if you really go into his life oh very very short life span he had 22 23 years you will find he was a voracious reader and he had a great love for spiritual scriptures as well okay. there is no revolution possible without the gita and if you are someone who thinks of the gita as something old fashioned and this and that i want to and wish luck to you no point wishing luck to you even luck cannot save you finished game up are you getting it it's therefore very important to read on your own of the of the people in the world who have who have contributed in remarkable ways huh? those 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 people can be counted on fingertips but they are the ones who have made life worth living and if you go into the details of their lives you will invariably find very strong spiritual imprints it is impossible to be a great person in any field without being spiritual and being spiritual is 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 not uh, about conforming to the images of spirituality wearing particular colors following traditions or, or superstitions or rituals or no 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 spirituality is none of that spirituality is simply hmm, what our friend here referred to an opening up of the mind an awakening of consciousness there is nothing esoteric nothing nothing mystical in it what we are having here is a spiritual process it's much the same as any other classroom lecture hmm? there can be a textbook and there can be a syllabus and this field deserves that hmm? it's called education of the self knowing what your mind is like it's close to psychology it's it incorporates elements of neuroscience as well but it has one thing that sciences do not want to touch the urge of the ego for liberation therefore spirituality includes love 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 of the highest order the love of the ego for its liberated self for its liberated state that's not a state but still i are you getting it if you are somebody who wants to really be big in life then you must realize that bigness is the prerogative of what the upanishads call as atma atma anant asim Huh? not just big but infinite limitless boundaryless bigness means nothing if it ends somewhere if it is circumscribed by a boundary then what is big to you will be small to someone else right it's just a matter of having a bigger boundary so bigness has a meaning only when bigness means infinity and everything about your body your mind your thoughts and material universe is simply finite therefore bigness lies in being untouched from that which is small meaning finite 
can i can i can i just see that the hunger within me is not going to be satiated by anything that is limited so why waste my time running after these small things because i have already have had enough of a run 5 years or 10 years of experimentation is sufficient even 2 years suffices and i have seen irrespective of how much i have of what this 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 has to offer there is an internal clamor for more hmm? the world outside is innumerable it can be put in numbers right is there ever a number that is final you can always add one more zero hmm? and you just have 10% of what you had are you getting it 10% is not something you can ever be satisfied with and you were reduced to 10% just by addition of a zero to what you have therefore the limited world is never going to satisfy you and you deserve to be satisfied you are not born to suffer you are not born to remain restless you are not born to keep feeling like a slave do you see how when you talk of <clears throat> sc bose his quest for independence was actually a manifestation of his inner quest for liberation externally politically what was independence from british yoke was internally spiritually liberation from the default condition of prakritigat slavery internally i want to be liberated and the result of that internal fire is my external action do you see this if you cannot have that internal fire within your external action will just be lukewarm there will be no fire no dynamite in it you'll be always afraid of death what kind of revolution can you do if if it's the body that's always at the top of your mind you, you require a gita to, to to tell you that this is perishable and would anyway go don't be too bothered about this this is just a resource to be used this is not a master to be served you remain in that which remains whether this remains or not you require a, the gita to remind you that that there is something that never gets destroyed because it never gets created and therefore there is no need to be afraid hmm? it it sounds so so melodious when 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 somebody says spontaneously na hanyate hanya mane sharire let the body fall if it has to i'll do what i have to you see it's not just about facing bullets it's also about facing rejection and poverty and what not let's say you want to start something great as a business venture what stops you i'll tell you what stops you is the fear of failure and if you go into this fear of failure you will ultimately find that it is the body that you are afraid of what will happen to this body what if i am pushed to the streets what if there is no shelter over the head so ultimately the war is against the the body therefore it is the body that you must put in its place come on hmm? when it comes to the body we were just discussing uh, yesterday or day before in the gita session when it comes to the body the gita says titikshasu tolerate 
no point uh, raising a big hue and cry tolerate and when it comes to the right action the gita says yudhyasu fight your job is to fight and in the process of fighting bear what you have to now do you see the the, the metal that a boss is made of tolerate and fight and you cannot say that if you are far removed from the gita i said i won't even wish you luck if the gita is uh, not the core of your life and when i said gita i i hope i made it clear that by gita i mean wisdom literature that pulls you up that opens up the knots within it could be the shrimad bhagavad gita or or any other book 